Well, hello again, and welcome to another episode of Addiction Got a Minute. It is Friday, December, what is it? Friday, December 21st, 2018, the first day of winter. I sure have. <laughs> got, I got to represent. What can I say? Um, I'm here with my, uh, my, my bestowed co-host, Michael Blanchard. Good morning, you're, Michael. I'm just happy you didn't tell me you were going to wear that <laughs> shirt. Okay. <laughs> I showed up. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, being there is half the challenge, and um, it's, you look beautiful. Okay, well, and you. it's supposed to be 65 degrees today, so you're more appropriate well, than us. Let me tell you, that darling, you look on. marvelous too. Yeah, right, well, I appreciate you. that. Thank it's you. Not how you feel that counts as how you, you look. look. And exactly. you look wonderful. <laughs> Speaking of looking wonderful, we have our our guest today, Brian Morris. Uh, oh, it's a pleasure to be here, and thanks, I'm Brian. honored to be with both of you on this. Uh, very festive day, despite yes, the Hawaiian print you shirt. Are on despite the fact that we all have gray on, this is probably not <laughs> sending I missed a good the memo gray and black. Wear like, your oh Hawaiian shirt. Can we superimpose like, <laughs> like, like a Santa outfit or something? Yeah, and then have wear a, a green more. sweater and then we can put, uh, you know, wow. bad sweaters on you. Wow, yeah. Well, it's um, an interesting, interesting time of year. Last week we were talking about some of the issues related to seasonal issues and um, you know I want you to keep in mind that uh, this is a challenging time for folks and I want to remind you that um, you know the emergency services is there God forbid that you have something which is difficult to handle uh, by all means you call them with questions uh, don't be afraid it is quite all right especially quite all right for them to say well things sound like pretty good let's keep an eye on it and then of course if you need more help they are able to help you there as well um, but, uh, you know, there are opportunities that come along in life and uh, God winks, if you will, kismet, where a, when skill meets ability and, um, or excuse me, skill meets opportunity. And I think, Brian, you're, you're, you're at one of those wonderful places. Um, guys, take yeah. it from here. I'd you like brought to say him. Something. It's your story. Yes. So, I... Brian is, is actually taking the position that I had previously at Island Healthcare. And last time I looked, it was called the Mental Health Substance Use Disorder Access Coordinator, and you required, you know, a giant business card to fit that in there. I've been called far worse things than I'm that, sure you have. <laughs> but yes, yeah. that's what I'm So called. Brian, when I was leaving uh, Island Healthcare to go do this in my art photography, uh, Brian came right to mind and uh, many of you on the island know him as her as a recovery coach supervisor at Martha's Vineyard Community Services when I think about accessing services and helping people that come in through primary care to find those resources and we all know any of you that have tried to get a, a, a child or a, a spouse or a family member the help they need with that giant moat that separates us from the mainland uh, it takes somebody that has spent the time to really learn and understand how to work the system. And in some cases, that's literally what it is, is working the system. I can't think anybody better than you to help people that are coming through primary care on this island. And I'm so happy that you took the position. I'm sure it's a loss for community services in that you know you were you were there, but you're but we're we're intimately tied together. It's not like you're going anywhere. And I'm just, I guess I just want to say to people on this island, if you need help, this is the guy that can help navigate the system. And so I'm very, very pleased that you decided to join us here as well. well Michael, that so. means so much to me, and thank you, because without you, I'm not in that position. And just back to the Godwink thing for a second. When I got here this morning, I hadn't seen Howie in a while, and we were bringing each other up to speed on, on what it is that we've been up to lately and lately the last six months i haven't really talked to howie in probably six months you know i i mentioned that um i had gotten my master's in spring um and i had mentioned that i was looking to do something with it to to grow some wings and 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 fly if you will um and it was beginning to look <clears throat> a lot like christmas no it was beginning to look like i was going to have to leave the island to do so and then speaking of god winks um, I spoke to you, and you had mentioned that you were leaving in your capacity yeah. at Island Healthcare, wanting to turn it into more of a part-time gig, at which point Cindy said, actually, we're trying to ramp it up. And um, no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> and 
I don't know if it went down exactly like this, but you said, okay, well, I know the guy you should hire. Yeah. And within close. moments, literally, you had given me her cell number. I called her and we were off and running. Yeah. So without you, my friend, I'm nothing, but that's how it works, right? Um, as to your <clears throat> very kind um, recommendation to go see Brian uh, when you need help, this island is full of people that can help people in the throes of addiction. Um, I've been blessed and fortunate to have worked for um, organizations that have put into play policy around this disease. It's, it's one thing to want to do something, it's another thing to be able to do it um, logistically, legally, uh, within the binds of um, whatever constrictions might exist between various organizations. So. When Julie Fay uh, and the hospital um, got together with three detox organizations off island and put into play the MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, um, things got a lot better. We were able to get people into detox usually within 24 hours. Um, <clears throat> in my time at community services, we probably placed 200 people. Um, I can say from personal experience six years ago, when I was a mess and I needed detox, I had to wait two weeks to get into Gosnell. Mm -hmm. Those were the worst two weeks of my life. And it's not that way anymore because people have gotten together and collaborated, okay? Collaboration's the key here. When I first got here, we lived in a very siloed community. I felt, break down those walls, right? Collaborate, work together, and we have. So it's through policy like that that um, I've been fortunate enough to be able to help people. and I'm. I'm flattered and honored to be in a position to do so. Well, one concrete example, just a simple thing, is in that MOU, you arranged uh, for drivers hmm. to come to pick up people at the boat. So I'm sitting there, you know, I was new in my position, thinking I knew everything, of course. And I have a, I have a, a, a patient who can't get to Worcester, can't get to ad care in Worcester. Uh, because of a transportation issue and as you know with 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 the disease it doesn't take much to kind of convince the person they don't need to go anyway because they don't have a ride and come to find out Brian and, and the team had had set up at a situation where there's drivers now that come down sit there with a little sign and, and and we'll pick up people right here that just need to get across to Falmouth to Woods Hole and, and you'd be amazed how that came to be you know how it came to be? We were talking with Ad Care and said, you know what, one deal breaker might be your transportation. Yeah. So they suggested we make a phone call. Don't talk about them without them, right? So we talked to their drivers who did local runs and said, would you be willing to come to Woods Hole? Guess what? They said, hell yes. Sheila is the lead driver. It's a lovely girl. Yeah. And um, really nice there are people. others now too. But yep. You know, just sometimes asking is, is all you need to do because even if they say no, at least the dialogue has begun, Yeah, if that makes sense. Don't yeah. ask, don't get. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> a uh, very wealthy gentleman told me once, the um, opposite of addiction being connection. This is another extension of that, connectivity, talking to the facilities and asking, <clears throat> you know, getting them on the line and talking about the challenges. The, the MOU program was tremendously beneficial there's no two ways about it and um, you and I were part of that scene for a long time and we've seen the benefits uh, look for those of you that aren't familiar with the whole process uh, once you decided to get help um, we will be able to help arrange for you to get transportation this means getting onto the ferry and being having somebody with you on the ferry and they will meet you at Woods Hole literally right off the boat and um, so we have this, the, currently the arrangement is with three facilities? Correct. If I could just toss in a little seasonal moment here. Um, at the Christmas party two years ago, so two years ago from right now at Martha's Vineyard Community Services, we had been doing the MOU for maybe two months, and the MOU is with Gosnold and Falmouth, uh, STAR, S-S-T-A-R. Stanley Street. Treatment Center. Treatment yeah. Center. Mm -hmm. um, in Fall River and Ag Care in Worcester. And literally, I was sitting at the Christmas party with a, you know, cake or whatever, some fruit cake that I didn't like much and gave it to Julie Fay, who happened to be sitting next to me. My phone went off and I said, excuse me, Julie, this I think is one of those MOU calls. Within 17 minutes, 
we had placed somebody in Gosnell. They were on their way to the boat. They were to be picked up. So the arrangement is such that um, each place has its own protocol, but a recovery coach or somebody from the hospital or, or Howie will call. You'll try to find the best fit. What, what, is there dual diagnosis going on? Do you want to keep it more local? Do you feel like going to Worcester? Um, meet them where they are, see what they want to do, and then get them into the right place. Um, somebody will make a call to admissions. It's like kind of a secret wink handshake deal. And that person moves to the top of the list for the first available bed. It is. Well, it, it's, the magic a, words. It, it's, a, it's a fascinating experience. Uh, being in the trenches like I was for so long, you, there's this mixed conundrum of challenges. You have to find availability, get insurance authorization, and transportation. So getting all these balls in the air can be a real challenge. And the difficulty with that is any one of these glitches can m muck up the works. Let's throw in a northeaster. Ooh, let's throw in the ferries not running a mechanical breakdown. And then you have all these backlogs. But what we're talking about here, once you get transportation, once you get insurance authorization, finding the facility that has the bed available, now they'll look into the, how critical the different folks are and take into account the difficulties that it takes for us to get people. So I want you to know that they're not abandoning or dissing or in any way uh, looking any less at any other candidate. They're all very valuable and they're all very important but they've streamlined the process. They've made it so. Because we talk about people that get stuck in the ER for days, and uh, it just makes things worse. The, the only time in, I would say, the 200 or so MOUs that I've run, the only time uh, that person wasn't in a detox bed within 48 hours was because of a nor'easter. Mm -hmm. The snow, the, the boats weren't running for two days. And I, I feel like I should give a, a plug here to the late, great Billy Stafersky, who worked oh. over community services. We, we just lost him this fall. What, what a saint. Mm. He just made everybody around him stand up taller, being the great army guy that he was. Anyway, oh. Billy mm. put this person up, because this person was a vet, in his own house for two days. That's, oh, the, kind of, that's the kind of community we live in. Yeah. And we, we lost a great one in Billy. But the point being, we are always getting mm. people into bed. Sometimes, as I told you, 17 minutes with Julie Fay. She was like, wow, that was easy. And I go, it's not always that easy, but yeah. The, of the, course, the, 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 it would happen like that. The protocol she <laughs> and the hospital and the kind folks at all those detoxes put into place. Um, Meanwhile, Carol and Kate and everybody else that worked mm. with me at ES is <laughs> shaking their heads. <laughs> Gee, that was easy. <clears throat> but you know, I, I want to say, back to your point about no insurance, um, it's not always the deal breaker you think it is mm -hmm. because certain <coughs> detoxes are willing to take somebody on if they're willing to enroll once they're there. Um, Explain I, the process uh, with Mass Health, for example. I, it's Christmas time. I don't want to do that to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's easy well, because if, you, if they are retroactive, they go back a week. Yeah. So if you're not enrolled, they will take you, get you into the enrollment process, and with that, they'll be paid. So that's what you're talking about. That is what I'm talking about. Another thing I'd like to talk about, d don't let no money and no insurance necessarily be, be a non-starter. STAR, I've put many people through STAR on their sliding fee scale, but literally two weeks stays for 25 bucks. Everybody can afford 25 bucks, I think. Yeah, what's cool about STAR is they're a federally qualified health center. They're unique in that, I mean, they're like Island Healthcare. Right. We, that's what's so cool about, uh, about us, well, not there anymore, but no, I still consider cool. that you'll take anybody regardless of the ability to pay. Now, STAR has to be careful too, but they get reimbursed considering the fact that they're gonna take folks that don't have money. Correct. Um, and so it's, it, there is a resource. Uh, and and I've, I've dealt with the financial office at Gosnell, you know, a couple of times, um, people, no insurance, no money working out uh, ahead of time a, a payment schedule. And, and they're pretty cool about it. Yeah. I put somebody in there, um, I think we got it down to about 1500 which he was able to pay uh, in time over the course of six months. Yeah. So he was happy to. At, for detox? Yeah. He was happy to get in that bed, and I, and I can honestly say that this was two years ago, and that man is still sober. I Hallelujah, don't think brother. he's paying off his bill anymore either. I think he did it. Cool. Yeah. Let me ask cool. you a question. There's one thing I want to get from you before we, before we run out of time. 
is I get lots of questions about recovery coaching versus a therapist versus a sponsor versus a... Now, I know Mass Health started reimbursing recovery coach time, which is a real acknowledgement from a bunch of, a group of people that don't like to pay a lot of money, but the fact that they're reimbursing for recovery coach minutes. Uh, what is the difference between a, a, a therapist, a licensed therapist, a recovery coach, and where do you see the two intersect here on the island? Great question, so, Michael, yeah. and I get it all the time. Uh, so I'm not a therapist, so I can't answer that question. I don't know what that's like to be a therapist, but I am a, both a sponsor and a, and a, a certified recovery coach. Yeah. Um, I would say the main difference, seeing as we only have so much time here, uh, as a sponsor, um, I'm taking people through the steps. The 12 steps. Yeah. It's pretty much your, I don't know too many sponsors who haven't done the steps with their sponsees. Yeah. Whereas, so not that that's the only thing a sponsor does. A sponsor teaches someone to do the next right thing, be mindful, go to meetings hopefully, yeah. um, become willing to grow along spiritual lines, which was a, a real game changer for me. Um, whereas a coach, and Howie can attest to this too, he went through the same training I did. Um, we, we meet people where they are. We motivationally interview them to empower them to want to own their own recovery, if that makes sense. Yeah. And we believe that there are multiple pathways to recovery, okay? Abstinence usually falls into play at some point. Um, meetings can and do work, but 12-step meetings aren't for everyone. That's why there's refuge recovery meetings on this island. We all went down to Punta Gorda, Florida, which sounds quite exotic, but it felt more like Camden, New Jersey. <laughs> Three days in, I looked at Eric Adams and he's like, I feel like I'm in Trenton. This isn't really Florida. Oh, is it? <laughs> but anyway, we, it was we, strange. It was that. strange, wasn't it? Yeah. So it was a week-long seminar on all the various ways to skin the recovery cat, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Smart recovery, refuge recovery. There are people with machines in the corner hooked up to tubes. Biofeedback. Biofeedback, that's right. Yeah. <clears throat> um, that hasn't uh, taken hold here, but yeah. the other types yeah. of meetings have. Um, essentially, like I said, we're meeting people where they are and helping them explore their relationship with substances and what, what they want to do about it and how can we help you get there. Yeah. I, I can sense? springboard off of that just a little bit. The primary difference that I do believe between recovery coaching and therapy. A therapist will take you through the process of engineering the, or re-engineering your state of mind, how to take the steps to purposefully uh, address the conflicts in a strategic manner in a system which has a process which has been proven, documented, and is understood by, by other professionals. The recovery coach will bring the person to them. The recovery coach offers all this diverse, multiple pathways, multiple methods to recovery. This would be on every conceivable way of group interaction, individual interaction, uh, different types of encounters, whether it be 12-step or um, any other self-help program. So the big differentiation between the two is the clinician has a purposeful design in helping address the specific issues and the coach is helping people to facilitate that model. And, and a recovery coach is oftentimes a resource broker, okay? <laughs> Making those connections you <laughs> spoke of. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm referring people to therapists to do their thing. Exactly. At which point I'm like, see you later, have fun, you know. Um, and then you talk with your client about that. Right. Making sure they get to meetings, making sure they take yeah. their medication, being the one to help surf the urge, you know, when it's a challenge. And yeah, it's a wonderful dance. They work in concert with each other. There, there's a little bit of overlap in that the therapist may facilitate the intention, uh, encourage people to follow through, but they're not the ones that are going to go to meetings with them. No. That's where the sponsor or recovery coach right. do. And back to Michael's <coughs> point. Um, there's good news out of Washington, said no one ever, <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Did Trump resign today? <laughs> no, hey, 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 hey. The, the <clears throat> HR 6 sorry. bill, no I don't politics. know if anybody's been following this, the, the largest piece of legislation against the opioid uh, epidemic mm -hmm. ever has been passed. And, and, and it's, it's wonderful um, on, on so many levels. Um, 
so expect to see um, changes more locally. Um, I don't know how anyone feels about Charlie Baker, but I will say this for a fact, he's behind this recovery coaching thing yeah, in yeah, a he's big, made, made big, big efforts on that. way. Yeah. So we, that Mass Health is yeah. now paying for. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that more and more recovery coaches throughout the state are being embedded in ERs, yeah. which many feel is the place for them to be. And I know that Howie did that for a long time, and it's important. Um, so slowly but surely, um, we're feeling the impact of the profession of recovery coaching, gaining integrity, mm -hmm. okay? And everything we do, we were taught in training, you know, be kind to the profession. The integrity of this profession is, is, is something, it, it's changed my life so much for the better, simply by helping other people. In the, uh, the five or so minutes that we have left in the show, the, what I would like to see is I would very much encourage you to ask Brian, ask us about the recovery coaching program to become a recovery coach and then start to affect change on people in your lives, people around you. Uh, it's one-on-one, -on -one, folks. Everything happens individually, one-on-one. -on -one. I would love to say that we could throw a big blanket over everybody and do, make this big move, but the individual interactions are the really valuable component. Here, here, and I would like to add, if you speak Portuguese, Please oh. become a coach, okay? And I, I'm, I'm not joking, I'm deadly serious. I've only seen in my time at Community Services two people, two Brazilians who speak Portuguese. I'm able to coach through an interpreter, which is okay, but it's, it's not ideal. And if, if you build it, they will come. If we have Brazilian speak, uh, I'm sorry, Portuguese speaking recovery coaches, mm -hmm. they will come. They, that, that population is so underserved on this island, and Michael can speak to this too, having worked at Island Healthcare. They need to be addressed more fully, and, and recovery coaching is one way we can do this. So the, the next round of training, if you're interested, hit one of us up. If you speak Portuguese, we, we would love to get you trained. And, it, and it's so hard. We had one patient, uh, I know, at Island Healthcare that's, that didn't speak any English, it was all Portuguese, and to try to get her into a rehab, she had to really have the drive and desire to get there because there mm. were so many places along the way. I just wanted to be able to talk with her. Motivational interviewing is you're in the person's head a little bit. You're trying mm. to use their, you know, trying to implant so that their motivations drive them. When you can't speak the language, it creates such a barrier. And um, it's hard to be empathically engaged with someone if you're yeah. not speaking. Yeah. So I language. give her credit for following through, but it shouldn't be that difficult. So I, I hear you. We need to have people that, if we're going to meet them where they are, we have to be able to speak the so language speak of where they are as Absolutely. well. So, Amen, well, brother. Yeah. Not only do I want to back you up on all that, um, Senator Baker, you've done a phenomenal job with HR6, uh, the Support for Patients and Communities Act. And Woody Giesman, um, who recovery coach, my supervisor, um, I mean, uh, for uh, intervention, my intervention supervisor, um, has done tremendous work to move that forward. So thank you both very, very much. Um, so we're, we're getting down to our allotted time. Brian, how can people find you on the interweb or here on Martha's Vineyard? Um, you can contact me. Uh, I'm still actually on the payroll of community services. Um, I'm doing coaching in the high school, and I'm going to start coaching at the charter school in January. Both my employers have agreed to allow that to happen, which is a wonderful thing. Cool. So wonderful. community services, <laughs> extension 411. I'm also now, um, even though I don't have business cards yet, I just figured out my email at Island Healthcare. Um, I'll just give you, can I give phone numbers out here? Sure. Okay, so 508-964-0940. That's the best way to reach me until I figure out what my actual extension is. Yeah, you're not going to get one until they make sure you're going to work okay, out. So use yeah, that. So the no you. business cards, nothing, man. I got to make sure you're good. And listen, <laughs> one of the beauties um, of my new job, again, Michael can attest this, is being out in the community, being here with these gentlemen here today is just one wonderful facet of... Uh, my, my ability to get out in the community and help as best I can. Um, don't be afraid to ask me, and I think these guys would say the same thing. Anything of any sort um, with regards to recovery, addiction, um, my life got a lot better when I started helping people because I certainly needed help when I was down and out, and I got it. I got it in the form of 
people here, which is why I'm still here. I want to give back. So if I can help you in any way, Hallelujah. Hit me. Ditto, brother. Literally word for word. Thank you. Especially with the holidays. I just saw it when I walked out the door this morning. Tomorrow is officially called Panic Saturday. <laughs> because 134 million people hit the road. All on Martha's panic. Vineyard are going to go shopping. Which can be a trigger, by the way. We have be. another half so hour for no holiday. No panic trigger. on Saturday. It's we wish I want to wish everybody an amazing Christmas. Peaceful. I'm going to grab my camera and I'm going to go take a picture. I'm going to, I got to go find a snowy owl somewhere. Don't look, why are you looking at me when you say that? We need a meeting. <laughs> we need a minute. I don't know. I love you, brother. Okay. Do I look like a snowy owl? You kind of got that look about you. <laughs> I've been you. called far worse than snowy owl. Can you yeah. see you with a nice but, wig no, on? Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to picture you. <laughs> and how All right, folks, we'll let it go at that. How okay? can folks reach you? Me? Yeah, you. Oh, they just yell out the window. There you go. No, I, I'm at 617-448-3934 or mblanch601 at mac.com. And I'm uh, Howie at HowieMarlin.com. That'll do just fine. So um, on behalf of Brian and Michael, we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a very happy, happy New, New Year. Year. May it be safe. May it be prosperous. My Lord may be healthy. Um, we'll see you next time. All right, it's a wrap. Damn, that went by fast, guys. That was by fast. That, that was fun. Well, it's that season again, folks. The holidays are upon us, and um, it can be really stressful. I just want to remind you that if things get really tough, please call Emergency Services, 508-693-0032. 508-693-0032. We all drip just one drop of sanity back into the bucket of our society. We just might end up filling the pool enough to give the next generation a little safer world. I've got a saying to describe my efforts. The best I can do is the best I can do, and I will. This brings us to the end of another edition of Addiction. Got a minute? I wish you warm breezes and clear sailing. And happy New Year.